The Cubs and Red Sox come in in the cellar today. They're both looking to kind of get some momentum. But coming into today, look, these ranks are, are, are not good, obviously, okay? They're, they're not playing well. They're not resembling the teams that they should be or we thought they should be. And, you know, Swish, I'm, I'm just asking if you're looking at this thing, you know, so right now, good nights for both these teams. Who do you right. think Red Sox or Cubs is closer to finding their stride? Um, I, I, think the, I think the Red Sox are a little closer. I think the Cubs are a little further away, and I'm going to give you the reason why. And as you saw the stats right there, I mean, you have the number two rated offense in the National League next to the Dodgers, right? But the problem is you have the worst ERA in the National League, right? So here's the thing. If you're scoring and you're producing at such a high offensive numbers as you are now, by the way, and guys like Rizzo, Bryant, and Schwarber aren't even hitting, right? But the problem is, is with these starting pitchers, if they are able to get the job done, the Chatwoods, the Darvishes of the world, the Quintanas, if they're not going to be able to get it done, right, and there's – some no-name guys in the back end of that bullpen. Morrow's still on the DL. No one down there that shut games out. If you're getting such great offensive numbers and you're getting bad pitching, that just doesn't seem like that's moving in the right direction. And to your point on Bryant, a 688 OPS right now. That was a good swing, I thought, to right field there. Melky made the play on, but mm -hmm. I'm still right. not really maybe seeing that consistent finish for him. Sure. And the power the left that show, Exactly. Well. That is a huge part of his game. We haven't seen that yet. And for me, guys, I still go back to Darvish. He is signed through 2023. I know, right? If, if he continues to not be able to command the ball in the zone, which was, again, a problem this week, not sure what they're going to be able to get out of him going forward. Well, let's stay with pitching, though. So the Red Sox, it was a rousing win for them today. They needed it to feel good. They're down 5 nothing. They come back and win. Great comeback. But, you know, we always talk about the World Series hangover, and, and sometimes maybe the numbers don't necessarily bear it out. But, JP, I'm here to tell you that it, they're bearing <laughs> it out right now because these starters worked very, very hard last year. And I don't know if they'll admit it, but I'd have to think that plays into this a little bit. Yes, and in one of the key parts of this graphic, pay attention there. The postseason workload for those three guys there at the top, especially Price, Eovaldi, uh, and Porcello as well. Sale, Price, and Eovaldi all threw fewer than 10 innings this entire spring. So think about that comparison. They threw a bunch in October and almost not at all in Grapefruit League play this spring. It's, it's not a criticism. It's just a fact. They're not fully ready. Yeah. They're not fully ready. They tried to be creative with the way that they right. prepared them for the season, Nick, but you can just see in the way they're pitching right now, yeah. Evaldi, and especially, especially this year, he's just not quite where he needs to well, be. Well, 100%. And that's the thing. When are they going to be ready, right? If this is still considered spring training time for them, how long is it going to take them to get ready? A month? A month and a half? With the way the, with the Tampa Bay Rays are playing, how many games are you going to be back at that time? It just it doesn't look good for Boston right now. they got to turn it around. they got to turn it around. Well, at least they had a nice win tonight, so that's a good start for the Red Sox. Tell so. you what, how about that salad topping? Great salad. Right there. He, he has got some game. He let that thing eat, huh? I, I, I would love to borrow some of that. <laughs> <laughs> you would look great with Tapia's hair. I think that would be a really good look. Oh, I bro. think it would be. Talk about taking your swag level to oh, the next level. I, I, I need to improve that. <laughs> Big, <bro. laughs> Quote of the year, JP, I need to improve that. That's what he said. Come on, JP, your swag is We got it, control. bro. We and got that's it. why you have all the info. So, like, so we'll start here. Giants, mm -hmm. look, they're... Uh, they're probably not going to have the greatest year, right? They're, they're, they're kind of a team in, in transition right now. They're trying to figure it out. they got some, some issues. But they also have one of the greatest postseason performers of all yes. time in Madison yeah. Bumgarner. And I'm going to ask you, are they finally going to make a move to trade him this year? I believe they will. And certainly the relief pitchers, I would say, the likes of Dyson, Watson, they're probably going to be moved without much trouble. But Bumgarner is going to be a difficult, emotional decision, I think, Kevin, for the Giants. But it's the right decision to trade. Madison Bumgarner. There, there are a lot of conversations during the course of the offseason. Uh, the Phillies were one team that I was told already has been doing due diligence, looking at his starts, maybe even looking at him during spring training to make sure they have all their information current. Uh, the Phillies, of course, they, they were able to make some, some aggressive moves in the wintertime, as we well know, to bring in three all-star position players. But they've got that one need for that lefty starter. Right. And if you're going to go all in, Nick, on one year to make a, to make a World Series run, yeah. who better to get? The Madison Bumper. Well, yeah, I, I figure what, and, and I hope that we have our one of our game's best postseason pitchers. Love to see that guy back in the postseason. So if, if, I hope this does happen because whoever ends up getting this guy, especially either at the deadline or a little before or, or whenever this goes down, because in my mind, this has to happen. This guy has to go somewhere else. Whoever gets him, 
they got a chance to win that I'm World just going to throw this out there. Back in 2008, the Milwaukee Brewers sent what turned out to be Michael Brantley for a fellow by the name of C.C. Sabathia. Yes. They weren't going to sign him. They knew he was a free agent. Yep. He was unbelievable. He pitched routinely on three days rest. He was 11-2 and two <laughs> down the stretch. Almost won the Cy Young in the National League that year. I happen to think that would be – look, anywhere would be a good fit, but I happen to think that would be a pretty good fit, and they would do the team to do it, too. And a quick point there. Their rotation ERA right now in Milwaukee is above five, and Craig Council has said he's on record as saying they cannot have Woodruff and Burns in Peralta for a full season because of innings limits in the rotation. That is a tailor-made move. KB, you are a new GM. Wow, bro, this well guy done. right here, man. Well done. He's not Insider, only handsome. Insider. He's, look at him. I mean, the guy's got it. All angles, ladies and gentlemen. I feel good about myself. Oh, you should. Well, you should. JP, thanks for the kudos. <laughs> All right, we got a lot more to do on LB Whip Round.